things. So I did a search uh, to see um, who was available um, with the talent, the passion, the commitment that, uh, that I was looking for and uh, narrowed that search down and uh, Audible Images was uh, uh, close enough geographically um, to consider. And uh, when I checked the references and talked to them, um, the feedback that I got talking with them and some of the testimonials from people who've worked with them um, convinced me uh, to give them a try and then I'll never be disappointed with that decision. Hi, I'm Art Hansen and I work with uh, Ed Masterson here at Audible Images and we just heard the conversation that uh, Rick Sutton and Ed had, had uh, about their first meeting for a, a home theater system so uh, from what you can recall, um, what did you all talk about in the conversation? Um, <clears throat> that was indeed a long time ago, <laughs> a couple of years at least. My memory is not what it was when I was young. Maybe I just have more in there. You know, it's harder to harder to access it again. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so Rick came into me and uh, approached me. He called me, made an appointment to come over. I took him in my big room. He was excited about what he heard here, and uh, he told me he wanted to build this this theme theater, our Star Wars theme theater. Showed me a picture of, from a magazine, I think, of someone who'd done a Star Wars theme theater. It was like the flight deck of a Death Star, I think, and uh, <clears throat> the uh, or the bridge. And uh, he, then he had some sketches of a room, and he was trying to put it in part of his garage at his place in uh, Bay Hill in Orlando. Beautiful house on one of the holes there. Um, beautiful, but uh, anyway, so. Uh, he, so he showed me these, we talked about it, he was excited to you know, start, that he, he'd met me and wanted to get something going, you know. And uh, I went to his house in Orlando and walked in, was greeted by a full-size Star Wars action figure. I think it was this uh, Stormtrooper and then closer to you know, the other end of the house there was a Dar uh, Darth Vader, I think. So, you know, it's like, okay, this guy's got, he's serious about the theme, you know. and. Uh, so we started talking about the theater, looking at the space in his garage. He wanted to try and enclose and turn it into a theater, and uh, you know it just wasn't going to work. There was not enough space there. So if I can interrupt you, did, I mean, did he have a? He had his drawings. Did he have like yeah. engineer scale drawings? Or uh, pretty close? Or? You know, it's hard to recall exactly what he brought in, but it was it was he had it sketched out probably fairly thoroughly. You know, the yeah. idea, but. Uh, he wasn't sure about there were some beams and things in the garage. There was a lot, a lot of challenges with the garage. And you know, in the end, after visiting there, uh, I think he, he and I concluded that it wasn't going to work the way it now, was. No, it was like at the first time you went over there, or after another visit or two. No, I think it was after the first time. You know, we talked about it a bunch, and you know, he was struggling with the idea of having to modify that, the property to support it. You know. Yeah. Um, especially because he's worried about you know, in that community, it's difficult to get approvals on things sometimes. But uh, eventually, uh, he came up with a really great solution, and that was to add a three-car garage to the house. So he came up with that idea? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Which I, I may have uh, suggested. I could have planted that site, sort of seed. Okay. I certainly have done that with other clients, and they've done you know, kind yeah. of significant modifications to support things. A um, little bit of a theme, I guess, for me. But uh, yeah, he eventually uh, came back to me and said, hey, I'm going to add a three-car garage, and we have this nice big room up top. I did some drawings. He did some drawings. Uh, eventually, his drawings, I think, pretty much became the reality. You know, his engineering background and his thoughts of what he wanted, he really thought it all through. You know, so it was pretty well done. Uh, he, he, he consulted with me uh, a lot on the details about seat placement, uh, speaker placement, you know, the paneling locations, acoustic paneling locations in the room. So you know, he really did a great job of uh, uh, doing the design himself instead of just having me do it, which is what I usually do, uh, but uh, working with me to make sure he incorporated all the things that needed to happen. Yeah, so. so, I mean, you're two engineers, real easy uh, for two engineers to butt heads. So uh, did any of that stuff happen or uh, didn't you have to kind of work through it or? How'd that work out? Um, you know, I, I'll admit that I was concerned. A lot of times engineers uh, won't listen to me. But, you know, and it's frustrating because maybe in a different setting they would. 
I suspect any engineer in a meeting with a group of other engineers uh, of, of different, uh, from different fields would easily say, well, I'm not a chemical guy, so I'm going to listen to the chemical engineer, you know. Right, right. But then they come to me and they're like, okay, well, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm technically not an audio, I don't know what you'd even call it. There really isn't a category for this, but uh, uh, maybe for recording studios there is. But anyway, the, uh, they don't, they're not necessarily willing to trust my knowledge, you know, and just trust what I say and incorporate that in their ideas, you know. They tend to have their own ideas and they tend to over, override everything. So, uh, Rick was different, you know, I think he, he probably was more of a management type uh, in engineering for a good part of his career, so I think he was understood how to work with people and maximize their benefit towards their objectives, you know. So. Yeah, well, he probably uh, pretty much enjoyed the, because uh, you like, you definitely like to take charge in the uh, thing, and, uh, and also, because uh, it's not just designing a, a theater shell, I mean, there's a lot of components involved, I mean, you have to deal with we, we, um, I don't know if I'm jumping uh, kind of early on this, but I know like when you did Jose's, you know, you had to deal with the uh, HVAC, you know, the airflow stuff and, yeah, the, uh, yeah. you know, the amperage yeah, and so all. Yeah, I, so because I had some experience before, I was e able to, you know, sort of easily guide Rick on some of the, those details to make sure we had good, you know, temperature control in the room. Um, he did some uh, pretty elaborate lighting in the room, and that was something that... Uh, posed a little bit of a challenge because the lighting controllers ended up being a little bit noisy. So, you know, he, uh, I decided after I heard them that it had to be addressed. So during a movie, um, it's my feeling, at least in certain movies, that the, uh, the lighting controllers were uh, loud enough to affect the, uh, the experience in the, in the room. And so we put in an extra switch to turn those off so they were quiet. Okay. That's a nice, those are the details, you know, we, you know, when I got it with him, he hadn't really addressed that, but I saw it as soon as I heard, I started asking about noise levels, you know, so. When you're talking with the lighting, you're talking about some of the, uh, the beautiful and, and effects, crazy LED yeah, lighting. The, yeah, the really okay. cool effects lighting that he had in there, and you know, they're pretty substantial uh, lighting systems, and they have these, you know, power supplies that, that drive them, and uh, unfortunately, the, L the lighting people aren't really thinking about sound when they design the, the right, lighting system. Right. So that's where you know I kind of come in and I get a little creative and say, okay, well you're not you're not going to have the lights on when you're watching and trying to engage deeply in a movie, you know. So you could probably just have just focused on the screen, you know. And uh, so you know I was able to go and put a mode where they just turn off while he's watching a movie, you know. So. Okay. But I know, you know, so he, uh, he did a good job of designing the room, uh, you know, and placing everything, you know, giving me the ability to place speakers where they needed to go, you know, and acoustic paneling and the seating, you know, and everything just kind of came together wonderfully. There were certainly some challenges. If you look, we had to get a little creative for the surround speaker uh, positions. Um, they look really good aesthetically. They just kind of disappear in the sort of the columns in the, uh, in the room. That was one of the things that he and I discussed and uh, with some special acoustic treatment stuff, and it sounds pretty good, you know, so. I notice uh, when I look at a couple of the uh, uh, drawings, the, uh, like when you're in the, uh, the construction uh, phase, it's like you built a, a shell within a construction shell. Um, yeah. why was, what was the point uh, behind well, that? Well, so, you know, we had talked about, you know, the way to construct this theme theater, you know, and uh, he had a space that was a three-car garage, but the shape for the room is it's not symmetrical. It actually it gets narrower at one end, and uh, uh, there's angles on the walls really and things like that. Because of the starship thing? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. for the, part of the aesthetic. And, and, you know, it ends up affecting the acoustics, of course, also. Uh, but there's actually a, a walkway around sort of the outside of the room in certain areas because of the angles and such. So you can get outside the walls and get behind them. Oh, okay, in fact, cool. the subwoofers are recessed into the walls. Uh, the backs of the subwoofers are recessed, so they're nearly flush. Uh, into the walls, um, and we, we worked hard to find the, the, the best positions for those and, and build in the openings for them. Uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, you know he and I working together, we yeah, really, everything just kind of worked out perfectly. Um, now a, a huge thing I know when you with just yeah two channel system, especially a theater, is uh, the acoustics, you know, and the noise issues and what have you, and 
Because he was building a lot of the, uh, the, he's built the Starship himself, right? Or he had people to build that part. He did a lot of the construction himself, actually, with, so, with a carpenter. He like, helped him. They built the actual whole structure inside the, you know, inside the uh, room. Now, what were the, uh, I mean, like the materials? It was just, uh, just nice uh, finished wood. You know, the millwork was all uh, wood. Uh, so or? okay, so yeah, actually, he had some of the, uh, I'll call it millwork, were, were uh, CNC pieces of. I think it was wood. It might have actually been a phenolic of some kind uh, for the LED openings, uh, okay. the lighting features. Um, but you know, it was mostly you know sort of classic wood construction that you'd built, see in a home being built. And uh, and then the acoustic, I mean, the paneling uh, were LED panels that he had gotten with you know the LED lights in them that could kind of flicker and stuff. For those like the cool little three. Yeah, they're windows. essentially the windows. That the idea yeah. is that you're looking out the windows into the starscape, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, so, um, and uh, you know, those are acoustic panels, and they happen to be placed, you know, well to, for the speaker positions to get a nice, uh, you know, acoustic balance in the room. So yeah, I mean, you so you obviously had to spec those uh, that he used those for the LEDs, or yeah, we talked about options, and that was where I led him was to acoustic paneling as for that, and that it's, it's a pretty common. Uh, yeah, technique. The nice thing is, is that he has space behind there, so we get uh, you know a little bit different results with acoustic paneling because it's suspended with a larger airspace behind it, and so we get uh, nice bass absorption with it. So uh, the room has very good, uh, very good clarity. You know, from pretty much from top to bottom. So, uh, like when you've done other theaters, you know, when you built them from scratch, where you did like a double drywall. I mean, you didn't have to really get into all that and uh, special. Uh, so he. He bought a sound door. That was another thing we talked about because oh, wow. there's a door to separate the house and this theater. And uh, he did some extra work on the wall that interfaces with the house, and then put in a uh, a very serious uh, soundproof, you know, soundproof, but you know, sound resistant door uh, to help isolate that. So when you close that door, it gets pretty quiet. You know. Okay. So. Um, but the the rest is over the garage, and the other rest of the walls are exterior walls. So. Uh, it doesn't really necessarily have an issue with neighbors. He's far enough away, you know, so you don't have to worry about isolation so much. So what about the, uh, like, designing the, uh, the equipment uh, choices, you know, and um, it had to be a pretty, uh, pretty powerful system, and you want, he want, you want it to sound awesome. <laughs> well, so, you know, if anybody knows me, they'll understand this, but I, I pushed him as hard as I could to get him as high end as I could get him to go because I really wanted the theater to perform Right. better than it looks okay to me the looks are always important and I know this had a very strong theme to it but you know when I see the awards for the big theater rooms and stuff you know half the time I see those I can just look at the equipment and go oh my gosh it's a beautiful room but the equipment being used means yeah. the sound isn't going to meet my de my desired goals you know so uh, fortunately Rick wanted to do it well and uh, you know we, I was able to do a couple kind of special things. He you know, got an opportunity on a pair of used speakers and a used theater processor as part of the deal. But um, he bought some very nice amplifiers, and you know, we put together a custom rack. It's in the pictures, of course. But uh, you know, he, very nice system. You know, it was, system I mean, it's pretty much a full Macintosh system, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Mac theater processor and amplifiers, uh, uh, multi-channel, the three-channel, one of their big three-channel amps for the front three, and then. Uh, multi-channel amps for the the rest and uh, then of course the speakers that he's got have large woofers with powered large powered woofers in them so uh, they're solid by themselves and then the JL subwoofers we put in there the big they really shake that room when they're supposed to so yeah you know, I heard it it's, it's uh, impressive yeah, yeah. Um, one thing a lot of people don't uh, you know when I have looked at a lot of uh, theaters that look you know you were just talking about they look beautiful they focus on the aesthetics and like a friend of mine just had one done and they don't have a, a center um, sweet spot chair if you will you know and uh, an odd number of seats in the front just i want just want to hear from you you know why is that so critical and so important yeah so i, I run into this a lot you know the uh you know when theater came out they put a center channel in and you know the idea was not everyone's going to have the perfect seat Okay, right. and so they were trying to make a sound system that would be better for everyone, right? 
they just never talk about the fact that the guy in the center, okay, that in the sweet spot gets a way better experience, okay? I mean, it's so much better that you really need to make a point of having a seat in the sweet spot, you know? And so like with Rick, it was difficult because he wanted a different number of seats than I necessarily thought made sense, but so he did some shifting and got the seats lined up. So he has, he has center seats and he sees it, especially once he experienced it, you know, that seat is, you know, it's awesome because the sound feels work perfectly. It becomes, you know, a continuous, you know, dome of sound all the way around you. you know? so, so, I mean, you did have a little resistance at Everybody, first. everybody, because yeah. it's difficult often. It. My, my suggestion is three seats or five seats, because that obviously gives you a yeah. center chair, right? Five is big for any room, okay? That takes up a lot of space. And three is kind of small. You know, so you end up with people going, well, I really want four. Four is a very common desire, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, that's a very common problem. And also, when you watch anything in stereo, and it's funny, this has become a lot more significant recently. I've been watching a lot of YouTube. And uh, YouTube, so far, everything's in stereo, okay? And so, okay, you know, I wish it was in better sound formats and stuff, and some of it's pretty awful. But uh, I have found that there's quite a... Uh, good amount of material on YouTube, especially, you know, well, YouTube. there's an infinite amount of good material on YouTube, but musically, there's a lot of opportunities I'm finding that are pretty darn good, like concert videos that are only in stereo. If you happen to want to watch one of those, the center chair is way better. If you're off center in any system, uh, in a stereo system, you're going to be pulled to one or the other. It's just, there's no way around that. It's the nature of stereo. Um, people talk about some speakers are worse than others, you know, whatever. The center chair is better. I don't care what anybody says. Enough better to make a point of putting a chair there, you know. So, uh, yeah, anyway, you got that right. See, it's great, great seats. Uh, the movie experience is really outrageous. I mean, it is, it's over the top. You know, people will be shocked when they uh, experience, I think. You know, especially the bottom end, it's, it's crazy in that room. Well, I went over there, um, you know, the one day to, uh, to work with you and Miguel, and it was, I, you know, maybe it was about 90% done. I mean, it was actually a working system and all. But one thing I noticed, uh, okay, we were testing the, uh, the surround, the back surround speakers, mm -hmm. and it sounded good to the average person. But you were like, uh, we may have to flip those uh, yeah. to get the sound I want. And then I, so I looked... Because Miguel has sent me a couple pictures that uh, where they were flipped. Now, why? What was the deal on that? Why did you have to do that? Well, cool. so the positions we were kind of had to work with to put to locate the surrounds, which were pretty close where they wanted to be, um, put them a little high up, just a little for the Martin Logan on wall uh, okay. electrostat surround speakers such that I wasn't sure whether right side up or upside down would be better because you can flip them, you know. So, uh, you know, there's a mid-range panel and then a woofer and uh, ended up that once I heard it, I think it, I thought it needed to be flipped. I felt like the sound was kind of going over the top. So by flipping it puts us right in the meat of the sound field out of the, out of the panels right. and uh, it, it worked better, you know, it enveloped us more. It's not what Miguel wanted to hear because you had to go take everything apart <laughs> and remove them. But, uh, you know, it's worth it you know, to get those things right. And it's a subtle difference, but, you know, for most people. But for me, it made a huge difference. It really connected everything. So um, Now this, because the overall length of the project was pretty close to two years, yes? Yeah. I mean, there was, there was a big gap because he added the three-car garage. Yeah, okay. So, like, during that uh, the time period, you're also kind of having to do like, I'm going to call it construction management, if you will, and to make sure like certain people are timing things and no mistakes are made early on that yeah. you can't recover from. So how did you, uh, what kind of things did you have to meter in that regard, you know, to make sure it was done right? Well, you know, the good news is Rick, Rick had it very much under control. Okay. And uh, you know, he, every stage of the building process, we were in touch and, you know, any things that came up, electrical, HVAC, all that stuff as it happened, we were able to address it, you know. And, uh, you know, we, uh, it was a unique project to have someone take 
to do that much themselves and take that much control, almost a little intimidating for me because I mean, I can go wrong very easily. <laughs> like I said, with engineers, sometimes they don't like to listen. So, right. you know, they do all this work and so they get done, you get done and the results aren't there. But uh, in this case, you know, Rick's a sharp guy, so he's, you know, all over it. And, uh, you know, what we put together, he's going to be happy with that for a long time. I mean, he's, you know, he looks forward to visiting that home now. You know, when he goes down there, his wife too. You know, every time I went oh, over there, yeah. she was sitting in the chairs, you know, watching TV or whatever. Because, man, once you have a huge screen with an image of that quality and then you're immersed in the sound, you got to be a little careful because you can end up spending way too much time in that room. I mean, there's so much content now. It's kind of endless, you know, with the streaming. It's just it's crazy. It's just it's so out of control, cool to walk in there, though. Because he's got those two uh, platforms of the lifelike, uh, you know, yeah. life-size yeah. uh, Star Wars uh, yeah. characters. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, I know that uh, he had like kind of a goal where he wanted to have the thing like at least operational by around Thanksgiving, and uh, did yeah. that work out pretty good? Yeah. You know, he set time targets, you know, and uh, or you know, schedule objectives, I, I suppose, and. Uh, you know, everything went pretty smoothly. We just kind of just made sure we were ready in advance and had some recovery time if we had any problems, you know, don't, don't wait till the last minute on things. And, uh, you know, I think most everything went really smoothly. Uh, we had one kind of funny thing with the rack. Um, I had my original concept for his equipment rack. Um, rather than casters like I have on this rack, you know, if you look in the pictures, you'll see the casters. The casters are functionally the best way to be able to move a large heavy rack around. Uh, but visually, it's not that excited about it, you know. So I mean, I was like, okay, I think I can do uh, basically felt material, you know, on the bottom of the rack. And I've done this before in certain applications where even with a heavy load, it just slides. You know, you can move that rack and so it makes it pretty serviceable. Uh, so we went down that path initially. And uh, to my disappointment, and especially Miguel's, <laughs> Uh, we discovered that once that rack was loaded up with all those amps, that it was pretty hard to slide. It anywhere. would slide, but it was hard. Okay, yeah. he had this. Uh, his tile has a little bit of texture to it. Almost, almost, oh, it's kind of, oh, it's okay. kind of a rough yeah. texture, you know. So yeah. I was like, okay, this isn't working. So um, if you look over the part of my building there, you'll see these big pieces of uh, polycarbonate that I bought, big sheets, you know, quarter inch thick. I thought I'm going to put one under there. Okay, and then when we want to work on it, we're going to put up another one, and then you start sliding, it'll glide like butter on there, right? It's like, you know, felt on glass, you know? Sure, that'd be great. Still couldn't move it. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, to Miguel's great disappointment, he had to disassemble the rack and uh, put wheels on the bottom. <laughs> so, uh, he disassembled the rack, put the wheels on there, and... Uh, yeah, you know, we solved that was one of those funny technical things. I really wanted the other solution, but uh, you know, in the end, the wheels work great. You know, they, they're uh, a little tricky to align, you know, to make it look perfect. But you know, with a little bit of uh, you know, obsessive compulsive attitude, you can you can have the have it look great. So, but uh, the uh, yeah, I mean, as far as uh, you know, in the end, everything turned out great. You know, I mean, there's really nothing to. Uh, Nothing that we didn't overcome and adapt to to get good results. So, Pretty fun project, huh? Oh yeah, man. I mean, those are. I hope they're not so few and far between. But uh, you know, when they when I get them, they're fun. You know, it's yeah. just just a lot of fun for me. And you know, for me, it's it's like it's getting to see the customer have so much fun with it. They, when they get to enjoy it and share it with their friends, um, you know, I mean that, you know, I get goosebumps even just thinking about it. You so know? cool. You know, I yeah. can I can tell you that. I had several goosebump moments, goosebump moments at his place during the time yeah. I was there, you know. So they want to get it right, and they'll stick with it, stick with it. I can't tell you how many hours that they spent tuning this thing in and checking this and redoing that and trying to not, they're not happy with it. In fact, I would say their standard for how this uh, theater would have performed audibly um, exceeds what mine would have been. And that's a pretty good feeling to know that somebody cares maybe even more than you do about how terrific the outcome is. If I was doing another theater and somebody or somebody was doing another theater and they asked me for advice and they said, what do you think or how did the experience go? I would, I would not only tell them the experience was great, but I would tell them if they go and use anybody else, they're crazy. 
because if you're in this part of the world um, and you have guys like that available to you, um, you'd be out of your mind not to uh, consider them and to do your project for you. They did a great, great job. Be careful. You too. Thank you.